Tourist has been the best programmer in the world for years, and this guy just beat him. This is MIT alum Ben Q, and to celebrate his victory, I'm going to build him a Hacker Cup trophy. First of all, I want to answer what I mean when I say the best programmer in the world. Just like you can compare two chess players by their ELO, you can compare two programmers by their ELO as well. In particular, on Code Forces, which is probably the biggest website for programming contests, Ben is now the first place individual in the entire world beating Tourist, who has held the position for, for quite a while and over the course of history has been the number one programmer for the longest period of time, Ben has now beaten him and is in currently in first place. How did he do it? Well, in the past two contests that he's participated in, he's won both of them. Goodbye 2022 was the last contest last year, and Hello 2023, Ben won again, beating Tourist in both cases, and this one he won by less than 100 points, but a victory is still a victory. He hasn't just been crushing code forces either. In Meta Hacker Cup, he competed in the finals less than a month before the Goodbye 2022 contest that I just showed you. This is a contest that I wrote problems for and helped commentate on. Ben crushed it. He won first place, winning $20,000 here. And he beat all of these competitors. He's the best 25 programmers in the world. He crushed all of them. Uh, he won on time, so it was a little bit nerve-wracking for him, I imagine, but still a very impressive victory. Now, he he didn't just win the finals. He, he also won round three as well. That, that's that's two Hacker Cup wins in a row. And, and before that, he won round two. And he would have won round one if, if Tourist didn't get in his way. So, uh... Yeah, he, he, he crushed it. And if anyone deserves a trophy, it would be him. Good morning, by the way. I'm sure a lot of people watching are like, Ben Q. That name sounds familiar. Well, maybe you're familiar with his Wikipedia page or the company he founded when he was six years old, which is now the largest producer of monitors in the world, Ben Q. Just kidding. That's just a naming coincidence is what they want you to think. But for real, this guy is more talented than Stephen He's dad. This is like Stephen He's father's father. Walking uphill to school both ways is trivial to him. He would just write a gradient descent algorithm in his sleep and get there before he wakes up. If you want a real problem, you can ask him to start a business. He could literally start a trophy company and stock his shelves exclusively on the trophies that he has won from programming contests. In the North American Championships, this man won so many trophies that he literally couldn't fit all of them in his team's luggage. He had to start giving them out to other teams who solved similar problems. In fact, this trophy is actually Ben Q's. He gave this to us because we solved the problem, but his team was the first to solve problem C. You go check the scoreboard and see. So... Yeah, he's he's that good. So when I was thinking what the trophy should look like, I was thinking, well, Ben won a Hacker Cup. It's coming from me, and I'm a Hacker Cup coordinator. I help set up the contest, make sure it runs and everything. So it would mean a lot if it was Hacker Cup related. And on top of all of that, Hacker Cup has a pretty simple to design, very famous trophy. Back in 2011, when Hacker Cup started, uh, Facebook, now Meta, hired Bennett Awards to create this trophy. And this thing, I've never actually seen it in person, but I've seen pictures of it. It is a beast. Like, look at this. This is this is Peter. He's a, he's a big guy. This is just a big concrete block. So this thing is probably like 40 pounds, I imagine. Yeah, but it's a, it's a big, famous trophy. Lots of people know about it. And I thought it would be pretty easy to copy. So the first thing I did is pasted it in, and it was really easy to just, if you just look top down, you can you can trace it, and uh, you just draw, draw lines here, you trace it out nice and easy, and you get uh, something that looks like this. So it kind of matches it. And I thought the, the base was a little disproportionate. I feel like it's it's a little too tall, in my opinion. So I made a different base. This one was kind of just custom. I, I made what I thought would look good. And we got something like this. I made the two holes so that it slides in, which should make it a little bit easier to produce. 
The nice side effect about this is in addition to being able to, yeah, see, like you can just like slide it in just like that. And there's the, the trophy. The nice side effect is I can just change this text here. And since I've already made the model, I can also just make trophies for second and third place. And I figured, yeah, I might as well do it, right? The only other thing I noticed was this trophy was made originally. It was designed in 2011, and I think it was a great design back then. Obviously, Facebook is known for the like, thumbs up, and that's kind of their main thing. So, yeah, I think back then that the hand is the same sort of styles, cut off at the cuff, it all fits the theme. Now it's meta, so it's a little bit less Facebooky, and I feel like this has shared design principles with a brand that we would really not like to associate ourselves with, or at least I don't want to associate myself with. Uh, so I'm going to repaint it. <laughs> we're going to keep the design, keep the, the thumbs up style, but instead we're going to use Meta's new logo colors when I paint it. And hopefully that'll make things a bit more hacker cuppy. All right, trophy is designed, but it doesn't yet exist. So let's do that now. Uh, to do that, I've got a couple of 3D printers here. So this is the thing people usually talk about when they're talking about a 3D printer. This is a hot spaghetti machine. has lots of hot spaghetti, and you can put the hot spaghetti in whatever shape you want. Great part about this is that this stuff smells amazing. It smells like fresh cut grass and apple cider, and it's about as good for the environment as plastic gets. On the other hand, we have this beast, which is kind of cool. Uh, instead of running on hard plastic, it runs on liquid. You can kind of hear it here. So yeah, this is like a liquid. And the way this works is if you expose it to UV light, it turns into a solid. So that's how this thing works. It basically has a phone screen on the bottom and this piece of aluminum metal. And the metal starts at the bottom and it'll raise up. And then as it raises up, the phone screen will flash different pictures and each picture is one layer that gets frozen into a solid at once. So that that happens as it goes up and it prints kind of like kind of faster um, and it only is one moving part. So it's really simple. But the downsides are this stuff smells terrible. It smells like gasoline, bleach and charcoal mixed together. So if it's near where you work, in this case it is, you want to avoid it if you can. Um, but it is it looks nice and it feels really good. You don't have layer lines really at all. It's, it's just almost a completely smooth print. And then also, the prints feel really solid. These ones feel kind of hollow because at the end of the day, they kind of are. And then you get these like very clear layer lines, which don't really exist when you do a resin printing. It's also really bad for your skin though. So I have these plastic gloves or latex gloves, which I wear. It also takes more steps. You also have to wash it and then you have to use uh, UV light to cure it. We're going to be using the cancer printer. It is, I don't know, might not cause cancer. Jury's out, but <laughs> it's probably not healthy. Hopefully that results in a better final product. So this was one of the hardest parts of the whole project. I had to get these really detailed letters painted in different colors. And you can think about how you might try that. I was considering just getting a paintbrush out but the idea I finally settled on was kind of a shot in the dark, and I think it actually worked out pretty well. Um, I just put a piece of tape over the entire thing, then I took some sandpaper and just sanded everything. And this works a lot like if you ever were a kid and you took a piece of paper over a leaf and just kind of covered the whole thing in crayon, and it would give you a really nice imprint of the leaf based on the, the pressure the crayon makes on the paper. It's a similar sort of thing. The only part of the tape that actually gets worn down is the border of each of these letters. So it makes it really easy to just take a knife at the end and kind of pop the two pieces of tape away from each other once it's weakened like this. Uh, and yeah, if I had to do it again, I'd probably do something pretty similar. One of the things I've learned in my first 24 years of being alive is that spray paint is a lot like sand at the beach. It'll get absolutely everywhere if you let it. So I covered everything in a very thick layer of painter's tape. On Code Forces, as you become a better programmer and rank up, the color of your name will change. The best rank you can get is called Legendary Grandmaster or Nutella. 
and it has a black first letter, red rest of their name. I figured since they've earned it, all of the contestants would want to see their name reflected in that color. All right, so I gave them a bit to dry, and now we have the the final product. Uh, this is my favorite part of it, this is unwrapping. It's like you have this beautiful product that you put a bunch of effort into, and you get to see what it looks like. It's like unwrapping a Christmas present here. So we've got the B. I really don't want to break the, the pegs at the top. All right, here you go. Here's the moment of truth. What does it look like? Oh my goodness, that's honestly a lot better than I even expected. Let me see if I can get the, the tape out here with like a knife. Pretty good, pretty good. Let's unwrap this, here we go. This is gonna be much more simple. Ooh, ooh, this is gonna be good. Oh, I am excited for this. Look at how beautiful the gold good oh that's so pretty so pretty oh my goodness look at this oh okay now how's the hack that's the real question a little smudging by the age if that's if that's the biggest problem with this i am a happy camper dang look at that so good all right let's put it on the trophy let's see what it looks like together So with my trophy printed and painted, I left my dumpster fire of Seattle for the land of tea parties in the school of mind and hand, MIT, to give a humble prize to the very best programmer in the entire world. You are Meta Hacker Cup champion. You were there back when there was like an original Hacker Cup trophy, right? Big concrete one, concrete block. Well, here is the closest thing to it that isn't one. Oh, wow. There you go. Did you make this yourself? I did, it's 3D printed. Wow. Huh. And when I was there, I also got him to sign my monitor. Just on the off chance it's not a coincidence. Hey, All right, thank you very much, Ben. No problem. I appreciate it.